Hey everyone, Missy Kitten here. So my surprise video is all done. This is it. And as you can see by the title, this is about serial killers. Now I've only got about seven on my list that I will be talking about, but they are, most of them, all but like one of them, is pretty publicized, I assume, I guess. Actually, I don't know if I have a better word for it. But this video may seem strange. You know, it's not something I normally do. I know I did my Eliza Lamb video and my Sideshow Freaks video, which were two little different things on this channel. But I wanted to do serial killers because I have always been interested in forensic psychology. So this will kind of show you guys a bit of, I guess in a way, kind of what I want to do. I had planned on being a homicide detective, but that involves the police academy and I don't think I have got enough health or strength or endurance or anything like that for the police academy. So my next choice was forensic psychology. That's what I plan on going to school for. So let's jump in. I've talked to psychologists. They have their theories, but they have no concrete answers. I never thought it would become reality. Jeffrey Dahmer, a.k.a. the Milwaukee Cannibal, was born May 21st, 1960. He is responsible for 17 deaths. Jeff was 18 when he killed his first victim. When he claimed his second victim, Jeff said he had no intention of killing the man. He had simply intended to drug him and rape him as he slept. The following morning, he woke and found the man dead. Jeff stated he had no memory of killing him. He then dismembered the body. For two weeks, Dahmer kept the victim's head. With each murder, Jeff would dismember the body. As time went on, there was a sexual part to that. I started saving the skeletons and other parts. Many, if not most cases, Jeff participated in sexual acts with the corpses before dismembering them. The killing wasn't the objective. I just wanted them under my control. It isn't easy saying that. On April 7, 1991, Dahmer claimed another one of his 17 victims. Dahmer drugged him, drilled a hole into his skull, and poured muriatic acid into it. The victim woke after this and said, I have a headache. What time is it? This experiment was to make his victim submissive. He confessed to having consumed the hearts, livers, biceps, and portions of thighs of several victims. It made me feel like they were a part of me, and it gave me a sexual satisfaction. In 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was killed by another inmate whilst in prison. I am a serial killer. I would kill again. Eileen Warnos was born February 29, 1956. She killed seven men and it claimed to each have been in self-defense. Warnos had a troubled childhood. Her father, whom she never met, was schizophrenic. He was convicted of sex crimes against children and eventually hung himself in prison. When Eileen was almost four, her mother abandoned her and her brother, leaving them to their grandparents who legally adopted them. At the age of 11, she began engaging in sexual acts for drugs, cigarettes, and food. She even engaged in sexual acts with her brother. She claimed that her grandfather, who was an alcoholic, sexually assaulted and beat her when she was a child. Before he beat her, he would make her strip. At the age of 14, she became pregnant after being raped by her grandfather's friend. When she had the child, she placed him up for adoption. When she was 15, after her grandmother died, her grandfather kicked her out of the house and she began a life of prostitution. She had much criminal activity, but she did not begin killing until 1989. This is when she took the life of her first victim, convicted rapist Richard Mallory. He had been shot many times and two bullets had hit his left lung and ultimately, ultimately resulted in his death. David Spears, her second victim, was found June 1, 1990. He had been shot six times. Charles Karskadden was shot nine times. Peter Sims, his body was never found. 
Troy Burress was, was shot twice. Charles Humphrey, six times. Walter Gino Antonio shot four times. Warno scored 32 out of 40 on the psycho psychopathy checklist. Scores above 25 or 30 are consistent with a diagnosis of psychopathy. Eileen was killed in, by lethal injection on October 9, 2002. Yes, I would just like to say I'm sailing with the rock and I'll be back. Like Independence Day with Jesus. June 6, like the, like the movie, big mothership and all. I'll be back. I'll be back. We serial killers are your sons. We are your husbands. We are everywhere. And there will be more of your children dead tomorrow. Ted Bundy was born November 24th, 1946. He killed between 30 to 36 plus people. Charming, handsome, and intelligent, no one expected Bundy to become what he did. It is believed that he began killing around the age of 27. He had mastered the skills needed in the era before DNA profiling to leave minimal incriminating evidence at the crime scenes. Bundy's mother truly believed that her son was innocent until the night before his execution. That's when he told her the truth. Growing up, he was raised to believe his mother was his sister. On February 23rd, 1976, Bundy stood trial for kidnapping Carol Durant. He was sentenced 1 to 15 years. In October, he was found hiding in the bushes of the prison yard with an escape kit. Bundy had confessed to 30 murders, 11 in Washington, 8 in Utah, 3 in Colorado, 3 in Florida, 2 in Oregon, 2 in Idaho, and 1 in California. It is believed that Ted killed many more. Ted raped and then killed many of his victims. I deserve, certainly, the most extreme punishment society has, and society deserves to be protected from me and from others like me, that's for sure. Ted died in the electric chair on January 24th, 1989. Jim and Fred, I'd like you to give my love to my family and friends. A clown can get away with murder. John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. Pogo the Clown, was born March 17, 1942. All of Gacy's known victims were killed and sexually assaulted in his home. Every victim, except one, were killed by asphyxiation or strangulation with a tourniquet. He was apprehended December 21, 1978. John had sexually assaulted a young girl when he was younger, and when he got older, he sexually assaulted many other youths, mainly boys. Late 1975 had come, and Gacy had joined the Jolly Jokers and had created his own performance characters, Pogo the Clown and Patches the Clown. He would create his own outfits and apply the clown makeup himself. He sometimes arrived at his favorite drinking venue dressed in his clown gear. Gacy told his wife that he was bisexual. Afterwards, they had sex, and he told her it would never happen again. His wife saw Gacy taking teenage boys into his garage and also found gay pornography inside the house. This led to their divorce. Gacy's first victim was 16-year-old was Timothy McCoy. He picked up the boy and promised he could stay the night at his home and he would take him to the bus stop in the morning. McCoy had made breakfast the following morning for the two and absentmindedly carried a knife into the room where Gacy slept when he went to wake him. Gacy got the knife from McCoy and killed the teen. Gacy would lead his victims by force or he would trick them. 26 of his 33 or 34 victims were buried in his crawl space. Three were buried in other locations on his property and the last four were discarded in the Des Plaines River. I probably said that. Many times he even dressed up as Pogo when he murdered his victims. On May 10th, 1994, John Wayne Gacy died by lethal injection. Kiss my ass. Paul Stefani, a.k.a. the Weepy Voice Killer, was born September 8, 1944. He killed four women. New Year's Eve, 1980, Paul brutally beat Karen Potap with a tire iron and raped her while she was walking home from a New Year's party. She survived with life-threatening injuries and is still recovering from brain trauma. At 3 a.m., Stefani called the police and desperately told him where she was located. On June 3, 1981, he stabbed Kimberly Compton to death. Afterwards, he called the police. He drowned 
Kathleen Greening, and stabbed Barbara Simmons to death in 1982. Finally, on August 21st, Paul picked up Denise Williams. He stabbed her with a screwdriver and she hit him on the head with a bottle, which allowed her to escape. Stefani returned home after the incident and called for medical help. The call connected him to the attack on Williams and he was later connected to the killings. Paul was sentenced to 40 years. He died in prison on June 12, 1998 from skin cancer. Don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry what I did to Compton. I couldn't help it. Don't know why I had to stab her. I am so upset about it. I keep getting drunk every day and I can't believe it. It's like a big dream. I can't think of being locked up. If I get locked up, I'll kill myself. I'd rather kill myself than get locked up. I'll just try not to kill anybody else. Fire emergency. Please don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry, I killed that girl. I stabbed her 40 times. Kimberly Compton was the first one. Oh, my chief. I don't know what she's mad at me. I'm sick. I'm going to kill myself, I think. Where are you? I'm just going to... list but I'm adding him in because this one actually took place close to my grandma's house and my old house. Leslie Allen Williams was born July 4th 1953. He murdered four girls all 18 and under. The first body that police had discovered was 18 year old Cammie Marie Venez. I honestly don't know how to say her last name and I'm sorry for that. Williams confessed to murdering her and three others. He then led the police to the bodies. Cynthia Jones, 16, Michelle Urban, 16, and her 14-year-old sister, Melissa. He was also a suspect in the abduction and rape of a 9-year-old girl. Leslie was arrested May 29, 1992, when the police found a woman in the trunk of his car. I turned children into killers. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to get a kick out of this guy's confession, but I know I sure as hell did. David Berkowitz, a.k.a. the son of Sam, or the 44 caliber killer, was born June 1st, 1953. David confessed to all six murders he committed, but he claimed to have been obeying the orders of a demon, a demon that possessed his neighbor, Sam's, dog. Yeah. You heard me right. He claimed his neighbor's dog was possessed by a demon. Even with this statement, he was found mentally competent. The demons wanted my penis, he once claimed. December 24th, 1975, he used a hunting knife to stab two women. One victim was never identified by police. The other was teenager Michelle Foreman. At about 1.10 a.m. on July 29th, 1976, Donna Loria and Jody Valenti, Valenti were both shot by the 44 caliber killer. Donna was hit by a bullet that killed her instantly. Jody was shot in her thigh. A third bullet missed both. On October 23, 1976, Carl Denaro and Rosemary Keenan were shot but survived. November 27, 1976, Donna DeMassi and Joanne Lomino were shot. DeMassi was shot in the neck, but the wound was non-life-threatening. Lomino was paralyzed in her lower limbs. January 30, 1977, Christine Freund and John Deal were shot by the son of Sam. 
Deal survived, but Frian died several hours after the incident. About a block away from where Christine lived, Virginia Voskerichian, I honestly don't know how to say that one, was shot in the head and died on March 8, 1977. The 44 caliber killer was gaining publicity. On April 17, 1977, David claimed two victims in one night. Alexander Esso, I honestly, I suck at names, sorry guys. And Valentina Serrani, Serrani, I, uh, I'm so sorry. Valentina died on scene while Alexander died in the hospital. He never got the chance to describe his attacker to the police. But the police found a letter at the scene. I am deeply hurt by your calling me a woman hater. I am not, but I am a monster. I am the son of Sam. I am a little brat. When Father Sam gets drunk, he gets mean. He beats his family. Sometimes he ties me up to the back of the house. Other times he locks me in the garage. Sam loves to drink blood. Go out and kill, commands Father Sam. Behind our house, some rest. Mostly young, raped, and slaughtered, their blood drained. Just bones now. Papa Sam keeps me locked in the attic, too. I can't get out, but I look out the attic window and watch the world go by. I feel like an outsider. I am on a different wavelength than everybody else. Programmed to kill. However, to stop me, you must kill me. Attention all police. Shoot me first. Shoot to kill or else. Keep out of my way or you will die. Papa Sam is old now. He needs some blood to preserve his youth. He's had too many heart attacks. Too many heart attacks. Ugh, me who it hurts, sonny boy. I miss my pretty princess most of all. She's resting in Our Lady's house, but I'll see her soon. I am the monster, the Beezlebub, the chubby behemoth. I love to hunt, prowling the streets looking for fair game, tasty meat. The women of Queens is the prettiest of all. I must be the water they drink. I live for the hunt, my life. Blood for Papa. Mr. Borelli, sir, I don't want to kill anymore. No, sir. No more, but I must honor thy father. I want to make love to the world. I love people. I don't belong on earth. Return me to Yahoo's. To the people of Queens, I love you. And I w want to wish you all a happy Easter. May God bless you in this life and in the next. And for now, I say goodbye and good night. Police, let me haunt you with these words. I'll be back. I'll be back. To be inter interpreted as bang, 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 bang. Ugh, yours and murder, Mr. Monster. This caused the son of Sam to replace the 44 caliber killer. On June 26, 1977, son of Sam attempted to kill again. Sal Lupo and Judy Placido both survived being shot. On July 31st, 1977, Stacy Moskowitz and Robert Violenti were shot and son of Sam took his last victim. Stacy died and Robert survived. David Berkowitz was caught August 10th, 1977. He remains in prison. For our final killer, we have the Zodiac. There's only five confirmed victims of the Zodiac, though through the letters the Zodiac has sent the press, he has claimed 37. The Zodiac has sent taunting letters to the press. The letters included four ciphers. Only one of these ciphers have been solved. High school students Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday were shot on December 20th, 1968. They were the first victim of the Zodiacs. July 4th, 1969, Darlene Farron and Michael McGough were shot. The killer shot five times, hitting both victims. The killer began to walk away, then heard Michael moaning. He returned and shot both victims twice. On July 5th, 1969, at 12.40 a.m., a man called the police department and, com and claimed responsibility for the attack. Darlene Farron was pronounced dead at the hospital, but Michael McGough survived. The caller also took credit for the murders of Jensen and Faraday. The police traced the call to a phone booth at a gas station about three-tenths of a mile from Farron's house and only a few blocks away from the police department. 
On August 1st, 1969, three letters prepared by the killer were received by the Vallejo Times Herald, the San Francisco Chronicle, and the San Francisco Examiner. The nearly identical letters took credit for the shootings. Each letter also included one third of a 408 symbol cryptogram, which the killer claimed, con claimed contained his identity. He also demanded they be printed on each paper's front page or he would cruise around all weekend killing lone people in the night then move on to kill again until I end up with a dozen over the weekend. On August 8, 1969, Donald and Betty Hardin cracked the 408 symbol cryptogram. It contained a misspelled message in which the killer said he was collecting slaves for the afterlife. No name appeared in the decoded text, and the killer said he would not give away his identity because it would slow down or stop the slave collection. On December 27th, on September 27th, sorry, 1969, Brian Hartwell and Cecilia Shepard were stabbed repeatedly. A man approached them wearing a black executioner style type hood with clip on glasses over eye holes and a bib-like device on his chest that had a 3x3 three three cross symbol, cross circle symbol, sorry again, on it. Brian survived, but Cecilia did not. Paul Stein was a cab driver who was shot in, in the head by the Zodiac on October 11, 1969. On October 30, 1966, 18-year-old Cherry Jo Bates was found dead, brutally beaten, and stabbed. On March 22, 1971, a postcard to the press was sent, believed to be the Zodiac, and appeared to claim responsibility for the disappearance of Donna Lass. The Zodiac's final known victim, victims, sorry, for the third time, were Robert Domingos and his fiance Linda Edward. Both were shot. To this day, the identity of the Zodiac is unknown. Is he still alive? There's truly no way to know. I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. To kill something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and the one they, the I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to, s to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. So that was all of them. Um, I'm sorry for messing up so many times with the names and everything. There's some, I think if you saw how they were spelled, you would probably understand or you would be able to get it your first try. Um, thank you so much for watching. This video was not intended to praise these killers in any way. I just wanted to educate. I think I just said that with my Freaks video too. I wanted to show people the way these serial killers are. Because a lot of times when people learn about serial killers, they just learn about what they've done they don't listen to their backstories, their quotes. So I wanted to include a lot of quotes within this video, which I feel like I, I could have had a lot more. But thank you all for watching so much. If you liked it, leave a like down below. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want. <laughs> We're pretty much the dark side here. We're going to become the dark side when I get a little bit more comfortable. Like, yep. it's going to happen. So, that's it for this video. And I will see you all next time.